again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. <sighs> <laughs> Tammy and I are a little rushed because I have a protest up at the State House or a rally, I guess, for freedom at 11 p.m. And I have a, a deck that has to be stained because I'm trying to list my other house and like it just never finishes. And, you know, for people who run on <laughs> tight ships and schedules and an that 10 Tuesday, extra and, minutes. You know, just really threw us for a loop, but yeah. we are we are here and we have a plan because Tammy wrote down four things that yep. we're going to talk about, starting with COVID beds yeah, in New so, Hampshire. So you know, I'm sure you all heard by now about Biden and his executive order to f tell OSHA to tell employers to tell their employees that they have to be injected with a vaccine that they may or may not want vaccine. or whatever. Um, a a, a, a uh, DNA yes. gene therapy. When they have an, a vaccine, albeit not even the perfect vaccine, the Novavax or Novax or whatever it is, um, from what I understand, it's not an mRNA. So it's not the same as the other ones. It's also not approved yet, if I'm not mistaken, right. um, which is just interesting that they're not approving that one. Um, <laughs> and what it does is normally a live virus vaccine, they take a piece of dead virus and that's how they make the vaccine. Um, I guess in this one, it still is manufactured virus. Right. But they're manufacturing the dead virus that they're, they're not changing what they're not. So, it, they're not changing what your body does in reaction to something. They are still giving it the tool to say, hey, this is what the bad stuff looks like. And uh, the reason we bring that up is oh, uh, a lot of the people I have been uh, happily arguing with on social media wow. like to say that this is exactly like the polio outbreak uh, from the 50s. So a few things about that. It's uh, First of all, you no, you're comparing you want, you're wrong, apples but... and oranges. And this, while we are calling it a vaccine, is actually other than this it's one, DNA. is is a little different. It's not, right. Um, so, so we'll just you put just a pin in that, that one right. so, for now. Um, so, so the so, other thing you've heard, yes. I'll just set her up, is uh, the hospital beds are right. overflowing and no one can handle it. And remember the, the two weeks to flatten the curve, which was 500 and something days ago? Yep. All well, right. and Biden specifically said in his press conference, if that's what we call those things that he does, um, <laughs> We have to do something because our hospitals are overrun with COVID patients and it's preventing other people from getting other types of care for say, you know, a surgery or cancer. And I thought, wow, who could have predicted that? That's this? crazy. Mm. If that's happening, that's insane. So I read, I, I pinged uh, my friend and- um, Because state remember, just please remember that we actually furloughed hospital staff and yep. close down all elective the, uh, medical treatments for almost a year. Right. So Tim Lang, who's a state rep who serves on, served on the um, reopening task force, which I don't even know might still exist. But anyways, he had posted way back when the data of hospital beds and how, what the usage was. Because if, if we are overrunning the hospitals with COVID patients, that is literally something to be concerned about. Sure. Because if you or I get sick and can't get into a hospital to be cared for for something else, because everybody's in the ho every bed in the hospital is filled with a COVID patient, that is, some, that is actually a concern. And that would also be an actual tell that there's something going exactly. on. I think the biggest frustration for me in any event has been this notion of you have to force people to do things they don't want to do because there's this thing that we should all be so scared of yes. that we are rationally not scared of. So there's a story and then there's reality. So since the Biden thing, which was, I think, on Thursday... So we're talking in the la within a week. Um, Tim Lang posted the updated numbers because obviously they change. And I actually share that on my Senate page every week, so you can take a look at Carla Garrick for New Hampshire. Um, New Hampshire has three thousand and sixty-seven staffed beds in use, completely in use, is two two thousand three hundred ninety-one. So there's, you know, hospitals are relatively full, which I assume they always are or else they'd close. Um, total number of COVID patients in those 3,067 beds is um, 146. 
So that's four points. How many again, Tammy? Out of 140, how many? 146. So that's out of 2,900? It's 4.7% of the total hospital beds in the state of New Hampshire are occupied by someone with COVID. Sorry, could you say that again? How many? 4.7%. 4.7% of the beds. ICU beds in New Hampshire, there are 274. 193 of them are in use for all all reasons, which again, I always I presume is n- normal. Of of those 274, 36 people have COVID, which is 13% of the ICU beds in New Hampshire. So 13% of the ICU beds in New Hampshire are occupied by COVID patients and 4.7% of all hospital beds in the entire state of New Hampshire are occupied by COVID patients. Now, we could say, well, maybe we're an anomaly. Maybe New Hampshire's, you know, special, because we are, but that's beside the point. So then- We're special because we have the New Hampshire Tim, advantage. Tim shares Maine, Vermont, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. So he shares all, all of, of them. New England. Um, New England numbers, um, 3.8% of all hospital staffed hospital beds in New England are occupied by COVID patients. So that means New Hampshire is actually a little, a little higher, higher at a whopping 4.7%. And um, of the number of ICU beds in, the, in New England, 12.25% are occupied by COVID patients. So unless all of New England is vastly different than the entire rest of the United States, which I highly doubt, Joe Biden got on camera and blatantly lied to your face. In order, one might add, to try and claim bodily autonomy of the state over your corpus, over your body. That is what it means when someone gets up and says, we will force people to get this injection in order to be employed. And for all my lefty friends out there, I want to say this. Remember the scandal of the Me Too times and the whole Harvey Weinstein Mm. and the sexual harassers and that whole thing, which is a troubling thing and it is a reality. And, you know, it's good that it's getting addressed because that's not how it should work. Mm -hmm. If you can explain to me what the difference is between saying, well, I have to insert this into you in order to keep your job right or i have to insert this into you in order to keep your job what well because there's because there's this rhetoric and it's not real and it's a it's a narrative that for whatever reason this group of people including fauci and biden and the left that guy is going to end up in jail because he lied to congress the only way to obtain herd immunity is by forcing everybody to get vaccinated including children because fauci said even school children should have to be vaccinated when nobody to the best of my knowledge is offering free testing for antibodies to see who has natural immunity because the natural immunity that it's you get much better. is significantly like 13 times better than I think any it's much higher than it's that. like significant yeah. if you had covid and chances are you had covid and may not have known it if you're a relatively healthy person you may not have even known it but you would still have the antibodies right. even if you didn't have symptoms why are if we really want to get to herd immunity we would want to know what number of people had COVID, whether they knew it or not, and have natural antibodies. But that never seems to play in. Care for people with COVID, ivermectin, hydrochloroquine, oh, all those things. Nobody wants to talk about any of those things. Anyone could go Only to my about wall. you must get in a jab vaccinated. So, so here are a lot of questions that people should be asking themselves. Um, go to my wall, mm. and you can actually see that over the weekend, someone was arguing with me about ivermectin, mm. and I was like, "What is the active ingredient in there? Because is it true that Pfizer is actually now developing a pill based on the exact chemical compounds that ivermectin is made? But ivermectin, of course, is a very cheap drug that is used yeah. throughout the world." 
to huge effect. It uh, was designed by someone who won the Nobel Prize for science for it, you know, all of that. Fine, and you can go look all of this up for yourself. So over the weekend, I was like, what is the active <laughs> ingredient in ivermectin? Lo and behold, what was the first website that came up? The NIH.gov, the National Institute of Health, the place where Fauci works. And if you go look at the chemical compound, which I screen grabbed and put on my website so you can double check me, it actually says ivermectin may be used for COVID yes. because blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, so let's deal with the facts. So that is a fact. They are admitting now that it is, and you can go look at the charts, go compare Israel to, mm -hmm. I think it was India or uh, some country where they, actually in India is interesting because they have s provinces and some provinces are following sort of the American style yep. interventions and some are following the rest of the world's interventions. And you can compare those charts and then the states or provinces where they're using ivermectin and hydrochlor hydro hydrochloroquine Quinn, i can hardly say they that. um ha see remarkably less death right so you know take that for what you will but the facts are there you can go look it up for yourself if you want to believe us so there you go that's this week's covid nonsense it's what? not that covid's not not a real thing it's not that people aren't getting sick it's not that people aren't dying but you're being lied to and because you're More being... people died in 2017 of whatever the flu season was that year, which was probably SARS or MERS yeah, or one of those, right? The one that Canada had. But you did not have this like level of insanity. The other thing that's happening with the vaccine mandates, and here's the thing I wish people back home would fully understand. If you want to wear a mask, wear then a mask. you should wear a mask. If you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. No one is stopping you. Where we have an issue is when people are now mandating, therefore saying, I will use coercion. What is a mandate? Right. A mandate eventually says, government we force. have the right to come and force you to do something. And we will bring men and woman with guns to your door in order to do it. That is what a mandate is, and that is why we need to be very, very, very careful when we're mandating things. Also, again, we do not know the long-term effects of these vaccines, regardless of every single warning that pops up on social media, and you should not, for the love of God, give this to your children. They are at well, no and risk. That's what, you know, people, the same people who say, but the polio, but we, we, look, it worked here. But then nobody, those same people never talk about thalidomide. Thalidomide was a miracle drug that was going to um, help pregnant women, right? Except, oops, after three years, we realized it really wasn't doing, it might've been doing what they thought, but it was also causing children to be born it, without their limbs. It took them five years to recall that medicine. Uh, Fauci was also the person who recommended, I think it was AZT. So this was back in the AIDS era. That was a drug that was being used somewhere else. They realized, oh, it's really killing a lot of people. We should probably not do this. Somehow it seemed like it was working on the AIDS virus. So on top of Fauci saying that you could spread AIDS through aerosol, which was total bunk. Uh, I don't know why he still had his job after that. Again, don't believe me, go look it up for yourself. Um, and the, that drug that they then approved to be used with AIDS patients went ahead, didn't work, and actually killed a bunch of people. So these are the people you're taking advice from. If you're wondering why the FDA had a bunch of people who just quit mm. their jobs, there is um, a report that came out that I read this morning that basically are the people who are quitting from the FDA DA, who are saying we should not do these booster shots, we don't know what we're doing, and maybe we should just take a moment and see. Because as we've been talking about, uh, the boosters and the vaccines, because it is being used during a pandemic, is actually forcing these variants. So in a place like Israel, where almost everyone is vaccinated, has the highest level of COVID that they have seen across this entire thing, because they're vaccinated. So, even the FDA is saying, huh, 
maybe we should just slow our roll here a little bit and just kind of see what's happening. They came out, they said, instead of encouraging or saying that we should have booster shots, which of course Biden did say last week, maybe what we should do is make the vaccine available to the rest of the world first Mm. and then get everyone on one base level that wants it can get vaccinated. Those of us who want natural immunity or to trust our, you know, our bodies, uh, those of course are the choices. And, um, and so, so, you know, even the people who have been pushing this are starting to pull back the science people and say, "Mm, maybe we should wait a while. And I will leave, we're going to talk about the re eval The re re But before we do that, I do have a joke. Oh, (laughs) about trust the science, right? So everyone will say all the time, trust the science, trust the science, trust the science. I'm like, you know who's not saying trust the science? Pluto. (laughs) Yeah, really, that's, don't even, half you won't get it. Yeah. Um, So the reval, we talked about this briefly, I think, last week. And then I got my bow. Yes. (laughs) So, um... Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to put up a graphic here because this is really important for people to remember. See these green lines up there? Those green lines are how the commercial rates will drop. Wow. They are going to pay less taxes. The red and pink lines up there are all how much taxes are going to go up for all these various things. It goes from vacant land, single family, residential condos, apartments, three families, two families, and this whopping one down here at the bottom, four to eight family units. Um, So as you can see, this is very lopsided. Why is that? Well, because of the stupid way that we, not Manchester specifically, just the stupid way in general that we we do property taxes. how do we fix this? Well, the way to fix the bigger problem would be for the legislature to li- live on the edge and be the leading uh, state in to change the way we assess property taxes. But the, yeah, that's a bigger problem. You know, that's never easy to do. But here in Manchester, uh, you're supposed to have a reval every five years, but the city could have filed for a waiver because of the crazy real estate market. But they didn't. So what's happened is... Well, they have no incentive to, right? Because Well, they Joyce get... doesn't really have much of an incentive well, because... Well, people are if pretty she annoys... mad. I would vote against well, her just for the re Imagine if all of her big money donors were paying less in taxes while you and I are paying way more. Oh, oh yeah. I oh, guess that's... Just uh, saying. So the, there's always incentives. But um, the reason the numbers are so t- lopsided is... Because of the pandemic and because of the, the the crazy residential real estate market, the commercial properties aren't aren't didn't increase in value as quickly as the residential market. But what this really means in dollars and cents, everybody by now should have gotten a letter saying, "Hey, you've got this new value, and um, if you want to appeal it, you've got until September 16th to file for." I'm definitely appealing to do mine. it. I I, th- I guess I'm going to appeal it. I don't really know how. I mean, they, I mean, don't all the mayors get tax abatements? How about we just pay whatever so, the mayor is paying? So I pulled out last week because I was Unless like... Unless she's paying more than I am, in I, which case I retract that I deal. wanted to look at, uh, <laughs> for, at a few commercial properties. Like, okay, let's make sure that this really makes sense. Because John DePietro made that graphic. If John DePietro made it, I generally trust it because he's really, really good with statistics and numbers. And you can get find that on johndepietro.com if you want to find it, if you can't find it on Facebook or wherever. Um, so I pulled out the tax bills from the website because this is all public knowledge. You can look up anybody's tax bill on the assessor's site. And I looked at what their old assessment was, what their new assessment was. And now what people have to understand is currently we're paying $24.66 per thousand dollars of revaluation. That number will not stay the same. We're not going to pay 24.6% of this new number. We'll probably, they, they, they're guessing. It goes down a little, It'll be right? like seven, between $17.50 and $18 per thousand. Of course, they probably conveniently won't tell you whether it's 1750 or 18 until after the election because, you know, why would anybody want people to have the information before the election? They could do it before the election. They usually just choose not to. Um, so I pulled out four properties. The first one was Walmart because everybody hates Walmart, right? So Walmart, um, their old valuation was $22,071,300. 
Their new valuation is $26,512,000. So it did go up. Their old tax, they're going to pay $80,318 less in taxes than they did last year. Huh. Then I pulled out um, the, not Radisson. Is it a Radisson now? No, the, the double tree. Yeah. The double tree, the center of New Hampshire building. Their old valuation was $21,897,000. Their new valuation is $22,878,600. With 22 million, I'm sorry. 21,897,000, 22,878,000, which is interesting because theirs did not jump nearly as much as Walmart because part of commercial value valuation is based on profit. So the hotel did not profit. Oh, uh, because of the lockdown. So your house is not based on income, <laughs> but commercial property is based on profit. Okay. So um, they will pay $139,604 less in taxes. Um, the Puritan, you know, Chris Pappas's place, um, they will pay $9,438 less in taxes than they did last year. And the Mall of New Hampshire. This is the one that really got everybody's attention. Um, they are going to pay $930,000 less in property taxes next year. Almost so a we million got, bucks. Right. So between just these four properties, we are, the, it, these four properties make up about a million dollars in tax revenue that the city will not get from those four properties. Because guess where they will get it? You can put that graphic back up if you're there, Brendan. Maybe not. <laughs> They're going to get it out of all those people in that red section. And the worst of them all are four to eight family properties, so which are exactly the people who everybody keeps saying, we need more affordable, affordable housing. housing. We need to do something about the crazy rents. Well, those yeah. buildings are going to go up. There's no way that those property owners can just absorb... A, a, a tax increase. This isn't even based on additional spending. This is just based on your property. Um, then, just before we jump onto anything else, I had a laugh. So John DePietro did a calculator. Yeah. So I noticed that I got a link the other day, and the city has a calculator. Now, keep in mind, the city has the database that they can show you the old value and the new value. So you would think it would be an interactive one where you could just put in your address and it could show you. Oh, no, no. The government can't manage to do that. The government <laughs> makes you look up your old assessed value. So you have to figure out where to get that from. And then the new assessed value. And then it gives you, it does some calculating, right? It doesn't tell you that it's calculating it based on, I don't even know. Is it calculating it on $17.50? It doesn't tell you. So you don't really know. It, it gives you a thing that you know, your tax bill is going to be different than this estimate. But what I had to hmm. chuckle even more is it didn't even do the calculation right. Because... My estimated taxes with the new value say it's going to be $52.44, which is awesome because I just saved about $4,500. <laughs> but the reality is that should have probably said $5,244. So, yeah. And it says I'm going to pay, based on whatever number they're using that they're not telling you, $203.75 more next in this tax bill than I did last year. How, how, non, how non essential are y'all feeling? Because well, I'll just, tell you, it's not a good feeling. And the people are really pissed, for the lack of a better word. They are not happy about this. Um, I can't imagine how Joyce Craig expects to get through the general election when every residential property owner in the city is going to get a tax increase either just before or just after Election Day. Um it's yeah. just crazy. I mean, we live in a crazy world these days and all, but if the city could have filed a waiver to push this off for a year, which I believe they could have, we most certainly could have because everybody in real estate believes that the market will start to dip. The, the housing market is not going to continue on the trajectory it is. It's going to start to plateau and it will start to I come mean, back down in a year's time. Sure. And, and hopefully, right, because this doesn't really seem sustainable. But, you know, uh, they're printing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That's got to go somewhere. Um, well, that is we part spend. of the bubble. Uh, if if the country continues down this very dark path towards socialism and possibly even communism at this stage, 
uh, you know, I think that people will start to flee from other areas. I feel confident if you're Googling like freest state in America, you probably are hitting on New Hampshire yep, yep. very frequently, thanks to the hard work some of us have put in for over 12 years, saying that New Hampshire is this amazing place with the New Hampshire advantage. This guy, Jack Blodgett. 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 Whoever uh, Jack Blodgett is. He is a independent consultant in school innovation. Hmm. Uh, he lives in New Boston. He uh, So he works. So uh, he gets paid to he's at, do something for schools. schools. So he wrote in today's paper, there was an op-ed that uh, starts with freedom is just a word. That's the headline. So, uh, you know, that pretty much got my heckles up before we had even started reading. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can go uh, read it yourself and, and perhaps let him know if you think that freedom is just a word. But it did conclude with this, which, um, which kind of uh, made me very sad. Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose, as the song goes. To make freedom meaningful, we must assume responsibility for defining its limits and choosing common values. Yeah, there's th that's where the divide is. See, there's the people who think liberty and freedom and rights are whatever are, they tell are, you are, they well, are. Or are limited. There's only this little bucket of them, so we have to very carefully let you know which ones you can do. Where freedom and liberty and rights... Natural are, rights. ...are pretty much open-ended, and there is plenty to go around. Everybody can have these things. And so here's the thing. I think also some people seem to think, and this is something that is promulgated in public schools, so that's where I, they think it. Some people seem to think your rights come from the government. Nope. And so the government's allowed to tell you, well, you have this much right, you have that much right, much like we're seeing now with something like free speech, where suddenly people are saying, well, you don't actually have free speech anymore because we're going to say this, this, and this is hate speech. And then we're going to start to say these and these words you can't say. And then we're going to start to censor these narratives. Then we're going to start to ban these people etc cetera, etc cetera. so those are the people who think rights come from government here's news for you folks back <laughs> home your rights do not come from no. government your rights are inalienable what does that mean it means you get them you get them from your creator or you get them because you were born you have them they are yours no one can take them away including the government and if anything the government's single job is to protect your inalienable rights. I.e., they're supposed to just keep a check on these lunatics who <laughs> want to take French. your definition, who want to define for you what freedom means. Oh, yeah. just let me tell you what you need to do. Right, I'll fill you in. You don't need to know. No. Don't be thinking. Um, Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 21st, is Munanth you, yeah. Blah, 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 the primary. <laughs> municipal primary. Uh, make sure you get out and vote. Polls are open from 6 to 7 p.m. I'm going to make a shameless plug um, for Victoria Sullivan for mayor. You can find out more information about her campaign at victoriasullivanformayor.com. Um, I sincerely believe she is the best choice of the three candidates going forward to actually hopefully make some substantive change to our community and and change the trajectory we're on because our trajectory is not going in a good direction and um these tax bills are a perfect example of the wrong path that we're going on crime is going in the wrong direction homelessness is going in the wrong direction uh city oh, services are going in the wrong direction we really need somebody to grab hold and and fix this and i do sincerely believe that Victoria Sullivan's that person. I agree because, and I have endorsed Victoria for the simple reason that I believe in open, transparent, accountable government, and so does Victoria. Yep. She has pledged to um, unencrypt the police scanners if she becomes mayor, and that is within her purvey, and that is why I am supporting her, because I think the more we know of what's going on, the more we can actually police Ha ha, what <laughs> is happening? So uh, so that's my plug for Victoria as well. So Glendy, this weekend, get out, yep. go over, enjoy some Greek food over mm, there. At, I always get it wrong. I don't know if it's St. George. I don't, it doesn't matter. It's the church on Hanover, Hanover. Yep. Um, That is this weekend. I'm sure you can Google Glendy and find out more information if you need to. Otherwise, we'll be back next week with more fun and exciting things to talk about. Take care. Bye. Bye.